like it happened like in three days. So I entered a trade and three days later, I, I basically earned three, uh, three monthly wages. And like, I came to work after that and I was like, you know what? I don't think need this job. I said, if I hit, if I hit few <laughs> like, of these trades here. <laughs> yeah. I said, if I hit like few of these trades, uh, like a year, I said, I'm fine. I'm going to replace my income while staying at home. And now that's going to free up, free up like 40, 40 to 50 hours a week, which yeah. I can use to do something else. And I did yeah. that. Like, I think I quit my job like a few weeks after that. I was like, nice. sure. Why do I need this job? Like I just made three monthly wages, like in, in, in just clicking my phone. So again, look, it is again, again, it's awareness, but if it wasn't for my mentor back then, I'd, I'd probably be still earning 20, 30 euros a day, which again, is not bad, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's still no one would challenge me. So yeah. again, get, get someone like that, get someone who's going to push you, who's going to make you a bit uncomfortable because you only grow when you're uncomfortable. Like if you're just feeling comfortable all the time, there's, yeah. there's no growth That's attached to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. Um, I have actually never spent a lot of time on stocks. I kind of skipped them and went basically directly to crypto. Um, you also mentioned at one point that you got also into cryptocurrencies and I presume traded those. Do you notice any bigger differences there or how would you compare them? I don't really trade crypto. I see with crypto, I'm more like into long-term investments, but uh, I personally like stocks more because it's very kind of, it's more, it's like tangible, you know, there's like news, okay, this company is, the, the sales results are there and this, where like crypto is very volatile. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong, like the money that people make in crypto like cannot be compared to, I mean, like percentage wise, like you see all these like huge jumps, like 500%, it's like a normal thing in crypto where like in stocks, you kind of get used to like 10% maybe like, or, you're even like a few percent and that's okay like you get these like bank we call them bangers like every year and then but um it's okay like as long as it's very as long as you're disciplined you're patient and you're okay with like slowly compounding which i am absolutely fine with mm -hmm. i think like crypto is more of a i think a lot of people kind of go into like with with this kind of gambler's mindset you know like i'm gonna put this money in and i hope it just skyrockets let, let me see what what elon musk is tweeting about <laughs> let's see if i make some quick money on it where like with stocks again I like the the more like it's not a passive approach, but it's like more relaxed. It's like okay, look, mm -hmm. like see with stocks, like when you're down ten percent, it's like oh my god, like the the world is falling apart. When like with crypto, you could be down like fifty percent and be like yeah, sure, look tomorrow yeah. it could go up fifty percent again. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it is there's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I love how people make fun of it, like uh, crypto traders comparing it to uh, like stocks. They're like. Oh no, Bitcoin is down 5% and like <laughs> CNBC covers it in the news and <laughs> crypto traders are like, what? Like that, that's not even news. Like <laughs> that happens just like all the time. You know? It's fluctuating. It's like five, five to 10% a day. Like it's, it's mm. crazy. Yeah. But then again, that's, that brings us back to uh, perception, right? Uh, and awareness, right? So, some people look at five to 10% as a huge thing, right? And other people will look at 500% as like, Oh yeah, it could have been seven hundred percent, right? <laughs> so, um, hmm. I guess that the main question there is that, like the 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 emotions that come from these sudden changes in in markets mm. or prices that can affect people a lot. And um, I feel that through personal development, you can work on that and kind of stabilize yourself, so you can become a better trader, which is ultimately mm. the goal. It's not it's not about the money; it's about you being a better person yeah. right and a better trader and mastering yourself because th the only reason why you'll sell something is because you're panicking right and the only yeah. reason because you're buying something is like because you're missing out you feel that you're missing out um so if you master yourself more you'll basically get better at what you're doing uh which is kind of the whole point of this this podcast and uh what we were talking about earlier um what are some of your tips that you would give to people who are kind of like, all right, I, I started doing something and now the emotions are all, are all, are all over the place. They, they lost control or they're, um, you know, like scared of something or worried or um, have the FOMO, the fear of missing out, you know, like, do you have any tips on that one? Uh, yeah, like I actually, like there was a lot of talk about that within our like academy, a lot of like academy clients, the people that we work with have kind of reached out to me about, because you know, I, I was kind of involved with forex at one stage crypto now and stocks have been going on for like two years now so they kind of asked for some advice and what i would say to people is like first rule is do not invest more than you're willing to lose and that's that takes off all the pressure yeah. now again as soon as you invest more than what you're comfortable with, like look let's get let's 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 face it no one likes to lose money but like joe you know, if 
if you're taking like the money that's like if that's like your last thousand and you invest that there's going to be a lot of emotion behind it but if like if a thousand is not if it's just like a money that you know you're going to make joe tomorrow like then you got there's no there's no emotional attachment and i think that's the first rule uh, when it comes to any investing or trading i remember like when i when i started learning about it like all these guys kind of recommended starting with like a hundred euro like account he's like do you know what start with 100 and be prepared to lose the 100 mm -hmm. so like why would i even start if i'm prepared to lose but he's like you need to learn so you'd yeah. better learn on 100 than start learning on 10,000. Mm -hmm. but again then like when it comes to percentages like i i think people aren't underestimate how big is actually like five percent or ten percent it's actually huge you know it's just mm -hmm. when people invest 100 euros and they, they they're up 10 percent that's like a 10 10 euros but like you need to you need to kind of see the bigger picture like when you when you have an account which is like 10 or twenty thousand, and then you're up five or ten percent a day like that's that's huge money but again look the the i think tony robbins is a great guy if you want to learn about handling the emotions when, uh, in, in financial markets i think tony robbins is your guy and especially the book uh what's it called the money unshakable the game ah, unshakable. Oh, unshakable i think it, there's like a whole section where he talks about that the emotions when you see your like your hard-earned cash like when you invest in something and you see that commodity whatever it is like a stock cryptocurrency uh like a gold or whatever when you see that going down he's like the emotions that are triggered are the same emotions as if someone had a gun pointed at you like in your head yeah. it's like it's crazy like how how much we panic and then as you say people start to panic they sell at those like lows as we call it like a very yeah. low low levels because they start panicking like they mm -hmm. see their hard-earned cash hard-earned money going down in value it's like oh my god let me just get it out and i'll never do it again so look there's that's why uh diamond hands get get rewarded i think but yeah don't ever don't ever don't ever invest more than you're you're, you're willing to lose because if you do like it's just you're gonna put too much pressure on yourself yeah um what do you think about the uh, i absolutely agree on that one uh 100 i i always kind of do that like i take a percentage of my monthly salary and just like put it into something that i believe in or did some research on or both you know sometimes yeah. it's either or <laughs> um but yeah um i want to get your opinion on one more thing um some people say invest into only one thing and let it compound to the max like for the next 40 years right and a lot of people say uh diversify like buy five to ten different things and then watch them like what are you kind of believing in like how, how do you have a strategy there on like um, accumulating one thing or or diversifying well i i always thought that diversifying just kind of makes more sense but then like if you if you take a look at markets now right so there's all this like uncertainty with war in ukraine and this like the whole market is down so they said like you know if you diversify you're kind of safer but I, don't, I like personally from my own like experience now i don't see that being the truth like i know people like Aaron talks how bitcoin is down or cryptocurrency market is, but like the stock market is down big time so mm -hmm. like when one things go when one things when one thing goes down the whole thing goes down so you know there's but again it's i i agree there's certain things that if you diversify you should be more you should be safer yeah. but you know if it's panic it's panic you know it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it affects the, the everything so again look personally when i what i do with with uh with my stock trading i always keep a certain amount for trading and what i usually do is like i like to put like the whole that whole amount like that's my like trading amount and then once i i earn something i i withdraw mm -hmm. like the, the the remainder i remain i i withdraw the, the surplus of that so it's yeah. actually, I, I always like to have 3000 there for trading. And then what happens, I like to put like, if I, if there's like a stock that I see it's going to go up, I put the whole thing. Now, obviously you have to put a stop loss because now if you're, if there are like bigger amounts and you don't want to lose a lot of it, but yeah, yeah look, if it's long-term investments, absolutely diversify, like do try stocks. Like there's ETFs are, are like great things, you know, they're like a very safe option, like stocks. I think on average, they bring you 7%. Like even Warren Buffett is all about like investing SP 500 ETF. So look, I have something in crypto. I've I've been invested like in a few different things. So mm -hmm. I think it, it is a good it is a good. But if you really want, if you really believe in something, you've done your research, you feel confident. Yeah, why why don't put like well maybe not all your money, but mm. majority of your money in one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but not more than that. Not not more than that you can afford to lose. <laughs> Always remember that. <laughs> 
Apart from trading crypto, uh, a lot of people are kind of now building on a new level of uh, or, or a new layer of uh, cryptocurrency, which is on the blockchain. Basically, the NFTs um, took over the world by storm. Everybody's talking about it right now. Not many people own NFTs, though, yet because they feel that it's still early. But I know that you got involved into some and are, are looking at it closely. Um, can you comment on them? How do you like how would you explain an NFT so, to someone who's hearing about it for the first time? Uh, believe it or not, I even I, I tried to explain to my dad once and he even got me, he gave me like $200 or like 200 something. Like it was whatever, equivalent to $200. He gave me that in, in creation, Kuna. And I actually bought him an NFT. And he actually sold it like a few weeks later for like a small profit. It wasn't any great, but he was so happy. Like I, ha I actually handed him the money one day. I was like, this is your profit but how do i explain it it's like a digital asset could be anything like usually it's, it's a picture of something but it could be like a it could be a song or whatever like i i, I actually can't find a psychological way to explain it uh i don't know what to think about it Borden, to be honest uh it is a new thing it could be like the biggest thing ever or it could be like they could be gone like in next uh few years like i have about seven or eight nfts i believe right now or ten uh, again, for now, I just started with smaller amounts. Uh, it's going well. I'm talking wrong. Like I started, and like so, I I I bought an NFT and then I sold it, so I made some profits. So then I re so I, what I do, I just keep reinvesting. Mm -hmm. So like, and I, I I made a nice profit, but I'm just really being kind of careful, still a bit skeptical about them, to be honest. Like again, I own few. Uh, I'm gonna keep few for long term, just mm -hmm. because I know a lot of these projects they promise you like play to earn game or uh, staking is really popular where you kind of stake your nft to earn passive income yeah. so look again i'm holding few i'm not going to sell them but again am i encouraging people to get into nfts not really you know it's again i might be wrong like it's yeah. same like with bitcoin like 15 years ago people said no, it's not going to be huge and look at it now yeah so, but yeah we're early look we're early like if you think about most platforms are only like a year two years old like max like i i, I do all my stuff at crypto.com like i think just last month they celebrated like their nft section just celebrated like uh one year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like solana is is a huge platform recently like they're not they're not there for too long like so if you, if you get in now you're like you're early now it just depends on where the whole thing is gonna go yeah yeah um i think it's here to stay maybe not in the form that we're used to like um I think it's going to more um, develop into the, the direction of smart contracts where people tie assets into uh, some form of NFT uh, and the other way around, tie NFTs into some form of assets. Probably, um, so yeah. I, I think it can go both ways. Um, and I think we're going to see it a lot more in a lot of different industries. For example, an, an, an example that I love to use is, let, let's say you go to college, you get a education or a course or something. Um, you invest the time, energy, got smarts for it, paid money for it, right? And you get a paper. Then you have to kind of scan it to put it in a PDF file so you can show it to the interviewer for a new job, let's say, that you actually passed the course. Why can't that be an NFT that's digitally integrated into LinkedIn? And then as soon as someone clicks into it, it directly uh, takes them to a <clears throat> blockchain connected to your education school whatever where you can actually see if dushan did the certification that he claims that he has right because the problem with paper is that you can you know like fake yeah. it on the on the blockchain you can't and i think this is where we're gonna see nfts a lot uh, play out a lot more where let's say you go to a uh, bob proctor seminar you get a badge that says like you're certified for it right and then mm -hmm. let's say you can you can integrate it into a zoom platform that uh, supports nfts where you can uh, next to your name have like badges for the course courses that you did that are nfts that symbolize your education right that will be like a, a really cool practical way of you using them and um, I think that most people just focus now on the pictures because it's too early it's still too new right there's still not enough usage for it out there for yeah. it to go into everything right but um, I agree with you there what you said for blockchain gaming I think we're gonna see a lot of nfts there and uh, that's something that I'm personally looking forward to I've been a gamer all my life you know and uh, I'm looking forward to the first big game that implements nfts right Imagine you, you mentioned FIFA earlier. Imagine 
getting your football team to earning a million a month and getting an NFT that symbolizes that you're successful in trading or analyzing yeah. stuff. Like those NFTs could actually hold real world value because they would prove that you have some sort of financial skill, management skill, you know, like coordination, like stuff that can be tied to digitally and physically, right? And symbolize it through that. Uh, so yeah. I think it's going to be exciting. I actually play a game. Like I'm not, I don't like. I tried it. It 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 has potential. So it's like a trading card game. Uh, you know, like so the the cards, like some of the cards that you win, they're actually classified as NFTs. So you can actually take that card that you use mm -hmm. in a game, and you can sell it or like on on a marketplace, which is like a, a separate like a marketplace. I can you can use you can sell it for like Ethereum. So, you know, there's already that integration like NFTs with gaming. And I'm really uh, excited about like I, I like to play games, even though I don't I don't have as much time now with, you know, with, with the things I do and then family duties and all that. But I'm really excited to see like the integration of NFTs with gaming. And I know there's few games who do that. Like when you mentioned FIFA, there's actually a game. It's like a football game where you're like when the FIFA ultimate team, you have that, you know, like a card, like of your player. Mm -hmm. So like, there's actually a game. I can't remember the name now. I actually Googled about it. So you have those cards, like same with FIFA, but they're actually NFTs. So you can trade. So let's say you draw uh, Ronaldo, like a card of Ronaldo. And you can actually go on a marketplace and sell that for, yeah. I don't know, like 0 0.5 Ethereum. Like, you know, and then you make, you make a nice profit of, of NFTs. So look, there is integrate. I know Twitter has integration with NFTs. Uh, Instagram is going to have it like, soon. So again, trying it out. It yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's, there's, there's a lot of talk about it, but mm -hmm. again, until we see some like real life utility, like some proper utility, I think it's still, it's still like a very, you know, taboo kind of thing. But yeah, look, if you see all these famous people, like only NFTs, like that kind of encourages people to get into, get into the, <laughs> the industry. So um, you mentioned that some of the NFTs that you uh, were looking at were on crypto.com. Uh, what were the NFTs that you were looking at? Like, uh, the, I know that there are many different types, uh, but what were some of that caught your eye? So I own few, uh, there's few like projects that promise uh, play to earn games, or there's actually a project I'm involved with that has a, a lend to earn mechanism. Like that's what they're promising. So it's like a, actually like a basketball players. So they're like promising to build like a metaverse game and you'll be kind of, play, it'll be play to earn mechanism, but you'll be actually able to lend your, they're called bollies. You can be actually uh, able to lend uh, your bolly to someone and like make some passive income. Mm -hmm. um, there's also like few projects, like mostly projects that kind of promise play to earn games. Uh, so what I get, what I get involved mostly in, they're called profile, like PFP which means like stands like profile picture projects. So I think they're the ones that could be verified, verified by Twitter. You know, like that in Twitter, by, uh, if you have Twitter. Uh, so you have that like profile pictures in, in that circle, but you can actually have it like verified that it's your NFT. So if you put your NFT as a profile picture, you can actually verify it. And if they find you get like a hexagon kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, look, it's just flexing, I believe. But for some reason, people value that. And recently I actually created like a, a wallet, like a digital wallet for Solana. Because mm -hmm. I think like there's a platform called, or the marketplace called Magic Eden. It's like the largest uh, marketplace for Solana. And I think they have, they have like more interesting projects. Like a lot of them involve staking and like passive earnings and this Ethereum, even though it's the biggest, like, like OpenSea being the largest, the biggest platform, I think the gas fees are absolutely uh, crazy and I think a lot of money goes to waste so I can uh, avoid ethereum so all of my all of my nfts for now are on crypto.com but I'm looking into Solana I just all like the the minting of nfts is, 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 is late at night so I still need to still need I have like two and a half or three Solanas they're ready uh it's just you know they I I, I I'd be going to bed when they mint those nfts so I still have to mint my first nft on on Solana mm. Cool. Uh, how does the minting process usually work? Like, wh what do you actually do there? It's actually there's um, so in those prop pop popular projects, like you actually have to get in a queue. So the queue opens an hour before the official mint, and then if you get a good uh, queue like number, you could just go in there. And like on Crypto.com, it's it's much easier because it's just like you can actually pay by you can pay in dollars. Where like in Magic Eating, it has to be in Solana, so you have to have a separate wallet for it. 
Uh, but like once you get there, it's like, okay, it's your turn. They send you to this page where you could just buy. Usually there's like a limit, like you either buy like two or three per person and you just mint them and you open the packs. So like most of these like profile picture projects that I minted, there's like 10,000 unique. So every NFT, they're like all one, like let's say ball is, but they're all like, they all have different stats and different perks and this and that. So it's good, you know, we kind of have to be there an hour early. And I know with Solana, a lot, a lot of their projects have whitelist. Whitelist means that you kind of get to mint them before the public sale goes. So let's say if public sale is at 8 p.m., you can actually mint it at half seven, so you don't have to queue with other people, and you kind of know that you'll get it. Where like if you're on public sale, you 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 might not even get a chance to mint it because there's like five thousand people in front of you. So yeah, look, that's I, I think it's it's quite a painless process. The the only thing I, I get frustrated sometimes with Crypto.com, uh, there was a there was a mint, there was this alpha bots, there were like small robots, and um, I, I I got there in, in the queue like an hour before. I was waiting. I was so like excited about it, and then like ten minutes before they they give you a queue number, and I got number like twenty thousand something, and there was only ten thousand of them. So you know, you kind of get a bit frustrated. Like, oh my god, I'm so eager to kind of get my my NFT mm -hmm. because like you're there an hour early. You're kind yeah. of making sure that the connection stays fine, that nothing happens, and then like you get this. But look, the 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 num the the, num the number you get is randomly like generated. So mm -hmm. look, it is. Uh, well, you, can, you have to be like it's not like completely passive. You have to be active there, but mm -hmm. I kind of like I, I'm having like I'm having so much fun with NFTs. Like mm -hmm. I've I've been in stocks for two years, crypto about a year, forex like a year and something. But I, I've never had as much fun as I have with NFTs. Nice. So again, what 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 actually happens if you don't mint your NFT? Like, do you have to wait for another minting round or? Well, look, if it's project you, you really want to get into, you kind of buy it off what's called secondary market. So you can actually buy it off someone who minted it. So like a mint is always like a fixed price. Usually it's like on crypto.com, it's usually like between 150 or $200. That's how much it usually is. But then look on a marketplace, look, the, the, there's the floor price could be like 300, 400. Sometimes the floor price can be lower than the mint price. Rarely happens, but sometimes it does. So you can actually. So my first, the first um, NFT I ever bought was the Alpha Bot. Mm -hmm. Actually, like there's usually a rank. If it's like a 10,000, uh, 10,000 like unique NFTs, there's usually a ranking list. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you can actually mm -hmm. see like which rank is be best. I look like some of these. Like I know uh, I recently I've been to this Mad 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 Mad, Mad Hairs like the rabbits, bunnies. Okay. And the, the guy sold like number two rank for 27,000 and 27 and a half thousand. And the guy who had the number one uh, had an offer of 50,000 and he didn't sell it. Didn't so, sell you it. know, like if you get lucky, like it's, so you yeah. open one of 10,000 packs, you don't know what which one you're going to get. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, look, if you get 50,000 euros, like that's a, you know, that's a money that could yeah, bring it could another change mm -hmm. You could change, you could change life. Yeah. So, but again, look, the alpha bot i bought it off secondary market it was like a rank 1100 something it was 500 dollars. i said look i'm gonna do it i'm gonna i bought it like a few weeks later i sold it for a nice profit mm -hmm. so i was like sure let's let's reinvest that money so then i got three volleys i sold two for a nice profit i kept the best one so what i usually do is like i buy if if the max mint is three i like to buy three i said i keep the best one i sell mm -hmm. the two and then cover the 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 kind of minting fees and mm -hmm. Just kind of reinvest. That's my strategy for now. Cool. And what gives them the rating? How hard they are? Is it like um, it's the stats they have? Picture? Yeah, ah, the stats. So mm -hmm. it's like it has like laser eyes. So there's like there's only like let's say out of ten thousand, there's only like one percent has the laser eyes. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. that's like a or some of them have like zero percent perks, which means that less than a hundred have mm -hmm. whatever draw wings. Yeah, something. So. Uh, especially like these bodies, they had like attack and defense stat, mm -hmm. which is going to be used in uh, in this in game. play to earn game. So yeah, look, there's certain stats, and then again, there's a there's a ranking list which comes out usually soon as soon as as, as mint is over, yeah. and then you know that kind of dictates the price. So if the floor price is three hundred, you know that if you have a rank three thousand, you know that mm -hmm. it's just a couple of hundred above the floor price, mm -hmm. which is kind of it's just fair. Okay, cool. So things that I uh, gather from this is you should definitely have a, a wallet uh, from which you can like uh, mint the NFTs. You should pick a project that you like, kind of find out 
which things are more rare and which things are not as rare and try to get the rare ones right and try to buy them try to get on time <laughs> and and early in the minting process so you know actually the only get the only prerequisite to make money is hype i think that psychologically like hype is is what sells like if you like discord is is a huge like platform now for nfts like if you want to get involved in nfts you need twitter you need discord but you need to get the into these twitter servers that ha and you kind of see the hype that's kind of built around the project so there was a, a there was a thing on solana there was this project called okay bears nothing special just like animated bears teddy bears but there was so much hype and then they were minting for hundred dollars and like within two days i think the, the floor price was ten thousand it's just it's it's hype so again just look for the projects that are really hyped people are kind of getting all excited about it just buy those i think that's the and resell them like just make some profit and just say who made some money on, on <laughs> nft yeah yeah definitely uh, i like what gary v is doing with his nft project uh where he's actually tying real world value to yeah. the nfts i think this is where th those projects that survive will have to have something um, utility yeah there has to be utility. utility behind it yeah and uh, he's tying a conference to it now with so every nft is like a ticket to a conference every year you know and uh other perks like interview with gary facetime with yeah, gary yeah. like ping pong with gary <laughs> like, what, well, actually one, one of our clients actually uh bought one of we friends yeah i think she invested nice. twenty thousand, and i think they're worth like 200 something yeah the one she has yeah so it's a, you know it's it's, it's a life-changing money now that we're talking about it is it is yeah, yeah definitely um and i think gary is on, like on the right path he, he gets this stuff and especially Absolutely. social media stuff and he surrounded himself with like really quality people that can help him pull it off um so yeah i think it's a uh i'm, I'm actually sad that i didn't invest sooner into gary because i'm following him all the time you know mm. and i heard him talk about it and i was like ah maybe not now you know and i just kind of skipped it you know so uh definitely a lesson for the future you know but hey yeah. sure, look there's always there's always, always things that look there's things you're gonna miss and there's things you're gonna kind of jump on so look there's a, there's another opportunity coming your way i'm sure so, yeah oh definitely that's why i'm not worried you know like I, I think there's opportunity everywhere all the time i think that just too many opportunities and then yeah. you have to kind of select which ones not to go after and which ones you actually do want and uh yeah um Gary's project would have been one of the ones that I would have want, you know, because I, I kind of love his content and his energy and what he's yeah. talking about. So uh, that's why I kind of regret it. But all the other ones that I didn't get into, I really don't, you know, like regret because I know that tomorrow someone's going to make a new NFT project that, that I can jump on and like get into and like, because it's, it's so new um, and NFTs are not the only thing. Like we, we discussed so many topics today mm -hmm. where they can actually change your life and like move you to a direction where you want to go that, I'm really not sad about it you know like I, I just look forward to the future and use that <laughs> that's it uh dushan uh great episode but at the end we always ask the question of how to find the gold in life i asked you the last time let me ask it you again what would you recommend to people searching for that gold in life to find that something how to do it um find a goal find something you you want to achieve have do or achieve uh you need to be really excited about it okay so it has to be something that really kind of gets the desire out of you and then spend an hour a day at least finding out as much as you can about that one thing so again if you want to get into trading okay that's cool like why do you want to do that like and then really kind of go deep into why you want certain things usually it's money but like why even like if you want money like why do you want money so really kind of dig deep into why you want something and then uh, really like spend every, like at least an hour a day researching, studying all you can do about that thing that you're expressing interest in. And again, my, my, my biggest, uh, best suggestion is find, find a mentor, really mm -hmm. like work on yourself, but find someone who's going to push you. Because again, we tend to get comfortable. Like we have people who say, you know, I'm going to do it on my own. And I, I really believe like these people are trying, they, they buy books, they attend seminars, but we all drift. Like if you don't have the, the right environment, you're gonna drift. And I tell that to our clients, like I tell that to everyone. It's like you need to be surrounded like 24-7. Like what our clients, like they get like they get five coaching calls like from a mentor, they get one-on-one -on -one calls. We have the 6 a.m. club like Monday to Friday. So they're like 
constantly bombarded like with mm. okay study and study and now you're surrounded like and you see people like share their wins like oh my god i've earned x amount of, in in last few days i've achieved this win and like if you're constantly bombarded by that information and you're constantly surrounded by people like that like you're naturally going to grow like it's yeah. just it's as simple as that so get and also look get 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 that mentor again who's going to push who's going to make you uncomfortable mm. get someone who's going to really who's going to be direct with you that's that's really my, my 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 the best advice i can give to someone nice i like it i like it getting uncomfortable yeah sounds all, uh, amazing um, i think I look, people especially in these and especially look as you said the it's online age uh don't be the one sitting on the sidelines you know i'm not saying that, that everyone should get involved in crypto i'm not saying that but you know like do do a bit of research like see see what's out there like i think there was never so many opportunities to make money as there there are today So again, it's not for everyone. I'm not saying that, but just see, do, give yourself some time, do a bit of research, see what's out there. Don't be the one sitting on the sideline and then in a few years say, ah, you know, it was all, it's all seemed like I was skeptical about it 10 years ago. So just see what's out there. The Uncle Gold Podcast.